It's the only permanent, permanent source of real happiness, peace and contentment, isn't it? Like, most of us don't know that. So we, we run around every single day seeking new ways of you know, trying to get peace, trying to get contentment, trying to feel fit in, trying to feel comfortable, trying to, you know, we get all these addictions and we're running around in our madness state, you know, like one of those little mice on on those wheels, and our legs are going like 10 to the dozen, and we're just running around, running around, and this thing spinning around and it makes us feel like it's really getting somewhere. And we really feel like, how, how many of us feel like we're totally busy, our entire life's totally busy, and, and yet we're not happy. We're not in peace and we don't feel content. And, and, and we can't be because we haven't received God's love. God's love is what creates those things. And even natural love, in compared to God's love, are completely different. Natural love is... You know, one day you can be in love with a person and the next day she could do something and you're not in love anymore. And God's love's not like that either. God's love's permanent, real, constant. God doesn't love you one day and then the next day you go, oh, you know, I'm not that interested in Nicky anymore. He's, you know, you know, he did something today that offended me and I just don't, don't like him anymore, right? Or, oh, Catherine, you know, if you've, you've done a, you know, a few weeks ago you did that thing and I'm offended now. You know, he doesn't say that. Or he doesn't go, uh, you know, to, to people and say, you love somebody else. Lani, how dare you love somebody else? I'm a jealous God. I want all your love. And if I don't get all of your love, that's it, that's it for me. You know, I'm, I'm cutting you off for the rest of your existence. You know, Lani? <laughs> Um, the idea of permanent is because, like, I've just experienced like fleeting happiness and fleeting peace. Yeah. But to have permanent, like, when you re like you're talking about, you know, people receive, so you know, a little bit of God's love. When does it become permanent? Well, when you become at one with God. Oh. You see. When you've broken down all your facade and... Well, not any of that. It's when you've received enough of God's love for the transformation into perfection to have occurred, you become at one with God in that moment. Now, every one of these conditions is permanent. Like, you think you're going to be worried about what's happening tomorrow. <laughs> you know, I don't think so, right? You're going to be worried about what, where your next dollar comes from or, or you know, who's going to offend you or who, what, so, so, what somebody thinks of you or any of those things. Of course you're not. Because now you, you've got enough, you've now got enough of God's love to be connected with God 100% of the time. You know what God feels about you. And God's the greatest being in the universe. What, what God feels about you becomes the only thing that really matters. Do you, think, do you think under those conditions that you'd be worried about, oh, if I tell this truth, that person will get upset with me? Of course you don't. Because cause you're connected with God. You know, God's never upset with you about telling the truth. In fact, God wants to tell you the truth. And you even know that if you don't tell the truth, then it cuts off the relationship with God. Yeah, so that's when the primary relationship to God is so vital. Exactly. Exactly. And we're, we're going around, running around, trying to establish all these other relationships, not understanding that until we actually understand love, no other real relationship is possible anyway. And, and all we're doing is fooling ourselves, thinking that we can obtain something with that relationship that only God has on and offer and nobody else does. There is no permanency to any other thing other than God's love. And, and in fact, once you receive God's love, and I haven't listed there, you become immortal. Before you receive God's love, immortality is not an option for you. But once you receive God's love, immortality is an option. It, well, not only option, once you've received it to a one with God, it is a permanent condition. And you're aware of your own immortality. In other words, you get to a state where you walk through everywhere in the universe knowing that there's nothing, that anything can happen to do, that nothing that can be done to destroy you as a soul. Would you still have a physical body then? Or? Well, it doesn't matter. You, your soul, anyway. So, you, you know, you can have a hundred physical bodies in that state. Yeah, but none of them matter to you because you're, you're experiencing far more sensory input through your soul than you ever had through your physical senses. 
Yeah. So you're physical, you know, you're no, lo- you're no longer focused on your physical existence anymore. Because you, because because your physical existence is just a way for you to express your soul in the physical world. That's all it is. It's not like I'm scared because if I lose this physical existence, I'll lose a whole heap of things. You know, you're not going to lose anything. So you're not afraid of losing a physical existence. You know that oh, while I'm here, I can just experience this physical existence, work your way through whatever happens as a sensory part of your life. And you're in complete harmony with everything. You know what's going on. There's no fear. Uh, it's a pretty good state, huh? And only God's love allows these states. Only God's love. So when you compare human concept of love and then you compare that with God's love, can you see? Like it's it's amazing in some ways that people even bother with human love. <laughs> With one exception, and that is obviously if they're God's children, we would naturally want to love them. Right? But it's amazing that we bother to get all of these things met through methods that are completely like, and have proven to be like, if you ask pretty much oh, of those 7.2 billion people, you ask the majority, let's say you did a survey of 7.2 billion people and ask them how many of them are really, 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 really happy. I reckon you'd be lucky to get one if they had to analyse it really carefully. Like, there's people that are happy in this aspect of their life, happy in that aspect of their life, but not really happy other places, right? But even if you've got a hundred or a thousand, or even if you've got a million, or maybe even if you've got a billion, it's still only like 10% of the population. But every, you ask every person in the celestial spheres whether they're happy. You do that survey. You know what you get? Every single person, it's 100% yes. And you compare that with here on earth, and half the people here on earth is, are answering you and lying on their response <laughs> because they can't cope with the idea that they're not happy. But that doesn't happen in the celestial heavens either. Everyone's telling you the truth and it's a 100% response and it's a 100% yes when it comes to God and God's love. There's so much power in it and we, we've got to start seeing that as a reality. You see? And it's hard when you're beginning, hey? It's hard to see God's love as a reality because you've not experienced it properly or you might have had one little experience here or one little experience there or one experience that took you six months to have. Or, you know, and so, so uh, unfortunately what we do is we don't, we don't understand how essential it is for the rest of our existence and how important it is for our development. But once we do, then we start to pray. 